Evening guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. And what I thought we'd do tonight is come out to my forging shop and make a bedroll cook set. Bedroll cook set is one of our most popular items on our website. There's about 1,500 people currently on the notification list for when these things come in stock. And we've already sold well over 500 of these things, maybe closer to six, 700. However, we can't make them very fast. I'm gonna make one for you tonight on video and show you how it's done. But I can only make about 25 of these a day if I'm making them with my daughter and she's prepping the parts while I'm doing the bending and the forging portion of it. We can make about 25 sets a day. Now, obviously I can't spend every single day in this forge. So we try to get about 50 of them a week to Self-Reliance Outfitters, but tonight I'm gonna show you how it's done. Stay with me, guys. Okay, guys, real quick, let's talk material. We're gonna use Three pieces of material to make this set, plus a small piece of pipe that we're gonna use for a clip, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But we've got two pieces of hex stock here that are quarter inch, one of them 16 inches long, one of them's 18 inches long. And we've got a piece of 5 16 round stock that we're gonna use for our stake. So we'll use our stake over here later on to fit everything till we put our pigtails on. Right now we're gonna grind these two pieces to get the beginnings of what we need to make our fork and our pot hook. Okay, so we've marked these two pieces that we've got, and we've went six and a half inches down on the longest piece of the 18 inch piece, and three inches down on the shortest piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this short piece, and we're just going to roll it on this table to taper this down to a point. This is gonna be our pot hook. So we'll do that first. We can put this in a drill like this and we can turn it on the belt. But I found it's just easy with a longer piece of stock to just roll it. And so what we end up when we're done is we have a tapered point about three inches long. And this is going to be our shepherd's hook or the hook that we're going to use to hang our pot off of. And we'll eventually grind this side down to make our pigtail later on. Now, on the other piece that we've got, we've got it marked at six inches. And what we're going to do there is we're going to flatten this out or narrow this piece down to a rectangle from a hexagon. The reason I use hexagon stock is sometimes we put fancy twists and things like some of our bedroll cook sets and things like that. And that makes a really nice looking twist when you have a hexagon stock. So we make a lot of things out of hexagon stock for that reason. But this is just going to be a straight piece. So we're going to take this and we're going to come down one side on the flat. We're basically gonna knock it down to where we've knocked it down to a flat from the hexagon on the one side. And then we'll go back and do the other side. Okay, so when we're done with that, we basically have went from a hexagon to a rectangle on the front side. And now we're gonna split this down the middle with a bandsaw and that's what we're gonna use to make the fork for the front end of our set. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. Right. Cut that straight down the middle, and that's going to give me my fork. Get these two pieces in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this piece here that we ground to a point, and we're just going to put a little turning that bad boy with a pair of turning pliers or ring pliers. I use them for turning. They're actually ring pliers, but they work really, really good for these tight turns like this. And we'll get that back in the forge. Now we're gonna take this piece and we're going to grab each side of this and turn it straight out just like that and that. So at their level, we'll get that heated back up and we'll start pounding on it.
get our fork fairly even, get our lengths the same, get everything nice and flat, and this is where our cook rack's going to lay when we're done. And I'll show you that in a minute. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to turn these two ends. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cool this curl so that it doesn't bend when I put it over this horn. Turn this shepherd's hook. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this around. Just like this to close that up. And then I'm gonna come back here, go back the other direction with it to open it back up so that I've got something that I can hang a pot on, okay? And I'm just gonna finish the shaping on my anvil so that I've got this. Now this piece is ready for the pigtail. Now we're gonna take this piece, and we're going to turn it on the ends just like this. All right, so once we've got that done, and we can look to see how even they are here, make sure that our, everything's straight, neat, so the object of this piece here is to be able to take different size cook racks, whether it's square, rectangle, whatever it is, and lock it down here so that it can be put on a cook set so that you have a grill surface. And it doesn't matter what size rack you have, as long as it's this type of configuration, it will fit. So the next thing we need to do here is we've got everything set here. We need to make a locking device for this, and that's very simple to make. We're going to do that real quick right now. Okay, we've got a piece of pipe here. It's got a larger OD, obviously, than our stock. And I believe this is a 3 8 piece of pipe. And we're going to measure out two inches of this pipe. We're going to measure it two inches, and we're going to measure at one inch. And then we're going to put the bandsaw in lock here. Cut that off right there. We're going to cut it halfway through here. We're going to cut it halfway through here. Just like this. So we have so we have it cut halfway through here in a step. So you have one inch here, one inch here. And this is what we're gonna use for our locking mechanism. We're gonna have to do some manufacturing to this, to flatten things out and bend them around. I'll show you that right now. Okay, this is a pretty easy process. I take that piece of pipe and I squeeze it in a vise. And basically what that does is it flattens that side, just like this. And then I smooth it off on the sanding belt so that I have a nice even piece there to work with okay we'll do that come right back okay so i took that over the sanding belt knocked it down so i've pretty much got an even paddle there now i'm going to take that paddle and i'm going to come in here and lock it just a little bit above the line where it's at there and just take my stake and i'm going to bend it backwards like this then i'm going to lift up on the paddle to about an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna come in with a hammer and hit it right at the vise, just like that. What that's gonna give me is this configuration. And that's going to be my lockout mechanism that's gonna lock down my rack. I'm gonna bend that just a little bit more. Can eyeball that until it's right or wrong because I've made enough of these now. All right, that is our clip. I'm going to show you how that works now. Okay, so what will happen is this clip will slide up here just like this. And the rack is put on basically like this and folds over. 
and the clip is put in place to hold it in, okay? So that it won't move. That clip's a little bit loose. I wanna bend that just a little bit more down. No big deal. All you do is put that thing in the vise and bend it down a little bit. Easy enough to do that almost with your hands. And then we'll fit it up again and try her again. You got a little bit of spring pressure backwards on this thing, the way it sits in here. You can see it sits on that main bar there and it bends backwards here, just like this. There we go. Now we got it clipped in there better. Now, not gonna move no matter what we do, okay? So now we have a cook rack. Now we've gotta get this set up so that this becomes a swing arm cook set along with our pot hook. So we have something to hang a bush pot on and something to cook meat on at the same time, all right? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to pigtail both of these. And that means we're going to grind off a portion and we're gonna wrap it around our pole to make an adjustable piece on our standing rod that goes in the ground. Okay, so now we go back to the grinder. I've marked both of these pieces at three inches and we're just going to grind a flat that is perpendicular basically to the hook and the rack. So we'll turn this on, get this out of our way for a minute. Gonna hold this hook straight up and down, and we're going to grind three inches of this to a flat. So I'm grinding about half of that width off of that on both of these pieces. Okay, once we have both those ground down to where half the material is gone. We're ready to go over and heat these pigtails up and get them bent to fit our cook set rod. Let's go. Okay, so we've got an 18 inch stake here that we're just sticking the vise straight up and down. We've chamfered the top of it and pointed the bottom of it so it can be driven in the ground. And we're gonna fit our cook set pieces to this by pigtailing them around. I'll show you how that's done as soon as they get heated up in the forge. I'm gonna squeeze that down a little bit, keep it neat. You can while it's still hot. There we go. And then I'm gonna adjust it to make sure it's where I want it. Make sure everything's straight. It's pretty good. Put our rack on there and see how that looks. that to be up just a little bit so when you put weight on it it's going to flex a little bit i like it to be a little bit off level that's pretty good okay okay so final fit up and we're done we've got a pot hook that adjusts in height and we have a drilling surface that will also adjust in height and again i always can them up just a little bit on the final production because you're going to have some weight on there there's going to be a little flux when you put that weight on there and it flexes it'll be level you see what i'm saying so i like to have it up just a little bit when i make them so if you get your set and it's got an angle to it like that it's that way for a reason okay but that's how you make a bedroll cook set all right guys well i appreciate you joining me out here today at pathfinder forge and tool for a quick video on how to make the bedroll 
cook set. I thought I'd walk you through that. It's something that you can do at home if you've got the right equipment. If you don't, we got them on our website, but I wanted to show you how it was made in case you could DIY this thing in some way, shape, or form. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.